My mother taught me to read. I was the eldest child and she had nothing better to do, having given up her job when she got married, as women did then. And, and she taught me to read. And much later we thought she must have taught me to speed read uh, because there was no other explanation for why I read so incredibly fast. And of course, as a little girl, it was magic. Not only did I read an incredible amount of books, but also grown-ups couldn't believe it. And my mother used to boast, and then they would throw a novel by Sir Walter Scott at me and ask me about chapter 15, and I could do it. So it was a source of revenue, and I was very pleased. But it's not very popular. And I remember as a teenager, a man watching me in a train, and I thought he was admiring me. Far from it. After a bit, he said quite crossly, I hope you don't think you're reading that book. You know, someone wrote it and you're just sort of rushing through it. Yes, I do divide. I wouldn't read. I'm currently reading an excellent biography of Lord Castlereagh by John Bew. Um, I wouldn't read that at, at night. I probably would read um, a new crime story by Val McDermott, if you, if you like, you know. I, uh, I wouldn't read history late at night because I might miss something. I love reading crime. I always have since I discovered Dorothy Sayers when I was about eight. I really enjoy it. Um, but I couldn't read crime in the morning. I'd feel awfully guilty. It's very interesting that I discovered from editing The Pleasure of Reading quite a lot of writers drew attention to this element of enjoyable fear in their childhood, and I certainly agree with that. There's a book by E. Nesbitt, who I think is still one of the most wonderful writers, um, called The Enchanted Castle. It's less well known um, than Five Children and It, really. And it's about some children who are rather bored in a country house. Uh, I don't know what's happened to the grown-ups, but they've vanished, and they uh, decide to do a play, and they feel they need an audience, so they get all the grown-up coats, the tweed coats and the hats and the walking sticks, and they construct an audience. I can still see it in my mind's eye, 70, over 70 years later, and they construct this audience and they do the play and then suddenly they hear the sound of clapping and they look and the people they constructed are clapping and they call them the ugly wugglies and the ugly wugglies sort of come to life and start pursuing them. I won't give away the end of the story. I loved The Three Musketeers and 20 Years After, and The Count of Monte Cristo I reread about a year ago to see if it is, was as good as ever, and it was as good as ever. Favourite children's books? Uh, I think, just off the top of my head, Our Island Story, to which I pay a great tribute, because it introduced me to history, um, has to be there, The Enchanted Castle, would have to be there. A book I adored it was The Princess and Curdie and The Princess and the Goblin. And then as a teenager, I adored Gone with the Wind, and I still adore Gone with the Wind. Um, I think Harold introduced me to reading James Joyce. He adored Joyce, and he read it quite naturally and couldn't see the problem of obscurity. I mean, perhaps. Harold Pinter finds it easier to understand James Joyce because their minds might be on the same line, but whatever the reason, he kept Ulysses by his bed and I've still kept the copy there. So I hadn't up till then thought that I was the kind of person who would be able to read Joyce and of course I read it. It was fascinating. Um, so I'm always grateful for that. And he, um, I think he increased my reading of poetry um, uh, and it became very important to us both, sort of reading poetry together. I mean, he loved Larkin long before Larkin was at all famous. It was just on his wavelength. Kindle is, is uh, uh, wonderful for me going on holiday. I mean, of course I prefer reading books, but on the other hand, um, there are good things about modern life, and it's very difficult to travel these days in security with a huge bag full of books, so I travel with a Kindle, but I also take a book. And then I sometimes read a book on Kindle and, and then buy it, if I like it, to keep.